Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you a retro review of the original Adidas F50 Adi Zero. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys remember this shoe, perhaps have even worn a pair for yourself. For those that don't know the backstory here, this is the shoe that replaced the last F50 i tunit which featured the tunit system from Adidas where you had the uppers, the chassis and then the studs that were all interchangeable. They kind of scrapped that all together and went with the F50 Adi Zero which really was the first of its kind, an ultra lightweight soccer cleat and at the time of its release and even to this day it's still one of the lightest soccer shoes around weighing in at around 5.6 ounces but we'll take a more detailed look at that a little bit later in the video. Now the reason why this is such a significant shoe is one it released at the last World Cup um, back in 2010 so it came out four years ago it's not super old but obviously the Adi Zero line has changed a lot and Adidas as a brand has changed a lot. This shoe really changed pretty much all the models even up until this very day that Adidas has released. The Predator line uh, slowly adapted to the sprint frame um, kind of concept where it became lighter and lighter. We saw the Nitro Charge go into a sprint frame design. Even the 11 Pro, obviously it's a little bit different in their latest models, went into a sprint frame construction. So all of Adidas, Adidas's shoes got lighter and lighter. And if you look at the shoes it was competing against at the time, back in the 2010 World Cup, Nike's offering, or latest offering I should say, was this shoe right here the uh, Nike Mercurial Superfly 2, which featured a Tatian synthetic upper, the built-in flywire, the carbon fiber sole plate, the sense studs. It was a very, very impressive and very technologically advanced shoe. But when it came to weight, there was nothing even close to as light as the F50 Adi Zero, which is why this concept caught on and why this is such an important model because it really has influenced not just Adidas, but all the other brands to really push the limits as far as making their shoes as light as possible. So that's that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video and with that being said let's get right into all the details about the original F50 Adi Zero. To start things off I thought it would be fun to talk about the colorway a little bit. This was one of several launch colors for the original F50 Adi Zero. This one being the Chameleon Purple Edition which essentially was Messi's signature colorway for the World Cup. Now, the original F50s, just like they are now, not quite as much now though, um, were available in both synthetic and leather upper variations, with this one being the synthetic upper variation. As you can see, Messi, as I'm sure most of you guys know, was wearing and is still wearing a leather version of the F50, although his, as of right now, is pretty heavily customized and not something that you can buy in stores, or at least is nothing like the current retail version of the leather Addy Zero, so please keep that in mind. But nonetheless, this was a cool colorway because it had that kind of chameleon color change effect. It is obviously a purple shoe, but depending on how the light reflects off of the upper, it has kind of a greenish tinge about it, which I think looks really cool. I actually had a pair of leather chameleon purple Addy Zeros back when they first released. I wish I hung on to those. Unfortunately, I didn't. Uh, but nonetheless, I think it's a really, really good looking shoe. It's subtle, but at the same time, it is very flashy. Um, as far as the graphics on the outside of the shoe are concerned, I really like the original F50. It's got this very simple three stripe design on the lateral side of the shoe. No stripes on the inside as you guys can see. Your Adidas branding right there. Your F50 branding right there kind of right on the instep. And then it had this kind of fingerprint like pattern similar to the little dimpling texture you're going to find on the uh, Jabalani match ball from the 2010 World Cup. So that it was a pretty cool incorporation in this design. Off-centered lacing system with your tongue featuring perforations all throughout. And then again, it had this very strange kind of low cut with this little flap right here at the back. This is something we no longer see on Addy Zeros. And this honestly wasn't the most comfortable way of doing things, but it was very, very lightweight and still did get the job done. You have your all white sprint frame, as you guys can see, no my coach slot whatsoever. This is actually pre my coach. I believe there was one more Addy Zero that didn't have it, and then the one after that, uh, they started kind of incorporating that My Coach cavity. And this is something, again, Adidas seems to be getting away from as the new 11 Pro, as well as the new Predator, no longer has the My Coach cavity um, either. So, again, I don't think the My Coach thing is something Adidas is going to be moving forward with. And then, of course, the studs, as you can see, 
are that kind of lime green highlighter yellow color just to match all the other subtle accents of the same color on the rest of the shoe. So that's pretty much it as far as the colorway is concerned. Next let's talk about all the tech specs. There are two main elements that make up the original F50 Adi Zero that allowed Adidas to achieve such a lightweight design. The first is the synthetic upper, and the second element is the sprint frame outsole, which we'll talk about individually. Now starting off with the upper, this is of course the synthetic variation, which is the lightest version of the F50 still to this day. It's difficult to make leather as light as an ultra thin synthetic material, so that shouldn't be too much of a shocker. Um, but this shoe featured a one-piece sprint skin synthetic upper which actually felt really really good now sprint skin is a synthetic material that we've seen several iterations of over the years um, it was actually used in the f50 series up until the latest model where adidas finally made the switch from sprint skin to hybrid touch which in my opinion is a really big improvement uh, obviously the uh, synthetic variation of the f50 hasn't been the most popular over the years most people have opted for the leather version but this year this time around adidas has really put emphasis on the synthetic model and out of the two variations available the synthetic one is definitely the one to go with if you ask me even the professionals are wearing synthetic ones this time around because it really is that good now as far as this version of sprint skin is concerned it actually was not the first shoe to use sprint skin several of the previous f50 tunit models with the interchangeable studs and uppers also featured sprint skin but this was the first time we saw sprint skin in such a thin form factor where it really had no extra padding to it whatsoever and it was really designed to be as thin as possible and provide a premium barefoot feel trying to compete with Nike's very popular and still popular to this day Nike Mercurial line so uh, with this upper it's ultra thin there's really no padding to it whatsoever it has this nice kind of unique finish about it completely smooth other than this kind of uh, fingerprint type texturing they have here going across the upper which honestly didn't do much in terms of providing additional grip and then the uh, tongue itself features the perforations and is the exact same thickness as well so you had a nice uniform touch across the entire foot maintaining that barefoot feel which again was really really good and as far as synthetic Addy zeros go the 2000 10 model the original model was one of the best if you ask me now in order to maintain this barefoot ultra thin synthetic upper and still allow for a decent amount of responsiveness and stability for both lateral and medial cuts adidas had to do something to strengthen strengthen the integrity of the upper at the time with the superfly 2 from nike they had flywire technology so what adidas did with their sprint skin synthetic is they incorporated an internal fused on support cage as you guys can see um, it's this silver cage on both the lateral and medial side uh, of the inside of the upper. I was always wondering why it never went to the base of the sole. It's an answer that I will never know. Uh, but nonetheless, it definitely was effective enough in terms of stabilizing the sides of the shoe and providing adequate support and stability when you were making cuts at high speed. So again, really good design here by Adidas. And it really was, like I said, a first go um, at a shoe that was as light as possible and for the most part I think it exceeded everyone's expectations why which is why it became such a popular model and is still a popular model to this day features your ultra low cut the heel liner has that same kind of uh, fingerprint type of dimpling or texturing there on the inside very very minimal padding so for a lot of people it wasn't the most comfortable shoe just because of how minimal it was um, now with the modern Addy Zeros Adidas has kind of maintained a very very similar weight range um, but also a lot more of a comfortable feel if you ask me versus the original but that is to be expected they're always managing to make the shoe just as light but still make it more comfortable and feel a little bit better over the years that's something that's always going to happen with the evolution of any product line um, the insole was fully removable on this model just like the current ones um, they would normally come with lightweight and um, comfort insoles just like the current ones do as well unfortunately I only have the lightweight ones to show you but again they're not too far off from what you get now uh, with the current Addy Zero models mesh liner on top perforations throughout and it's just one single layer of this very thin blue foam gets the job done but certainly nothing special it's really just there to provide that step in comfort and to be as lightweight as possible as far as the sprint frame is concerned this is really what changed the game as far as why this shoe was as light as it 
was and as light as it still is. Um, the sprint frame is a one piece plastic heel counter and sole plate. At the time Nike was really experimenting with carbon fiber as a sole plate material and at the time I think that most people including myself thought that carbon fiber would be the way of the future as far as making products that were as light as they could possibly be but Adidas proved this all wrong by incorporating a plastic sprint frame which doesn't look the most premium but certainly is the most effective in terms of making a shoe to be as lightweight as possible. Obviously the carbon fiber sprint frame has made its return on the recently released Superfly 4 but again even that shoe is not even close to the weight of the current Adi Zero or the Adi Zero from 2010. So this sprint frame form factor is one that we're actually seeing Adidas kind of coming back to with the latest Adi Zero for 2014. They had more of an angular design on the heel counter with iterations after this particular model but since then they've kind of gone back to this rounded shape in the heel counter with a little bit of a graphic kind of printed on the outside which has no real impact on the overall performance. Then if you look at the base of the shoe you have these three little kind of spines running through the midfoot even into the heel. This shoe does not have any kind of a my coach cavity. The latest one does. I don't think that we're going to see my coach cavities on future versions of the F50 for the simple fact that we now have the new Predator Instinct, we now have the new 11 Pro 2, and neither of those shoes feature the MyCoach cavity, so I don't think it's something that Adidas is really moving forward with as far as future footwear is concerned. So if that is something that you use, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be available in the future. Uh, but again, it just kind of is something that uh, I'm just mentioning because this one does not have the MyCoach cavity. It wasn't a thing um, at the time of the uh, 2010 F50 Addy Zero release. So again, thin plastic sprint frame, it's really what made this shoe so lightweight and this was also the introduction of the infamous triangular stud pattern from Adidas. We see it still on the Nitro Charge, we see it on uh, the Predator Instinct now, um, on the LZ1, the LZ2. It's something that we've seen a lot of on several Adidas models over the years. Um, and just up until now, Adidas finally made a change to the F50 in the forefoot with the stud pattern. The heel studs have more or less remained the same. Um, but this is one of those stud patterns that some people love it, some people hate it. It's really good on kind of firm natural grass plane surfaces where it tends to be a little bit softer just because the studs do have a fairly large surface area so they don't penetrate the ground quite as easily and because there aren't many studs here it's not as stable as it could be if you're playing on slightly harder ground which a lot of people are so for the most part it will get the job done I'm not complaining about it in any way at all it's just a little bit unfortunate that this shoe did so well that Adidas kind of took that message as we should put this on all of our shoes because people really seem to like it and while they did seem to like it for the first year maybe even the second year come the third and fourth year I think it's time for some change and I guess it's a little bit unfortunate with that we see a very similar stud pattern on the new Predator instinct um, but again Adidas is going to use what's selling and what people seem to be buying so uh, as long as this stud pattern keeps selling well I don't really see any reason for them to change it so you can't really blame them too much but again I think that uh, eventually it is time for some kind of an evolution which obviously we saw on the latest iteration of the Addy Zero and if you ask me the new Addy Zero stud pattern is much better than this one right here which features the all triangular studs. So that's pretty much it as far as tech specs go and we move on next to a quick weigh in so you can see how lightweight these actually are. Just like the current Addy Zeros, the main appeal of the original F50 back in 2010 was that it was extremely lightweight. Adidas was advertising 5.6 ounces in a size 9 US, which at the time was so much lighter than everything else, where uh, most of the lightweight shoes weighed in around 8 ounces or so. Um, so to have a shoe at 5.6 ounces was extremely impressive. I remember I was really excited about getting a pair. I actually ordered them online. And when they arrived at my house, I was absolutely stunned at how light they were. I was actually one of the first people in my area to have a pair. So I'd go out to the field and even practicing with my team. And uh, they would all be really, really surprised at how lightweight the shoes actually were. And from people kind of having the opportunity to hold them in their hands once more and more people had them on their feet that's really how this whole F50 craze kind of exploded. People were stunned by how light they are. I think that that kind of 
shock has gone away a little bit just because there's so many shoes that are as light or very close to as light as the F50 now. Um, but like I said, at the time in 2010, there was nothing like it and that's part of the reason why it was so impressive. So I'm gonna weigh this pair in for you today in real time. Keep in mind this pair is a size 10 US so they will weigh a little bit more than 5.6 ounces. We'll throw it on the scale and you can see that they weigh in at 5.9 ounces, which again, for a shoe that's a size 10 to be under the six ounce mark is incredible. It's a very, very lightweight shoe and uh, that's really what the Adi Zero line remains to be and probably will remain to be for the next 10 years or so as long as Adidas doesn't scrap it and as long as they keep selling I don't see why they would scrap it. Um, so that's pretty much it as far as the weigh-in portion of the video is concerned. There will not be an on feet because like I mentioned they're a size 10 as opposed to my usual size 9 US so they are a little bit too big to do an on feet uh, but like I said that's pretty much all you need to know about the Adi Zero as a whole and move on next to my final thoughts. Alright guys, this is it for my retro review of the 2010 F50 Addy Zero. This is, like I mentioned, one of the most significant soccer cleat releases in the last 10 years for the simple fact that it is truly a trendsetter. Um, from the day that this shoe released, Adidas' entire lineup evolved pretty significantly. The Predator went the way of the Lethal Zones incorporating the Sprint Frame. The Addy Pure line turned into a, the 11 Pro line also incorporating a sprint frame. And then of course the Nitro Charge line was introduced, which also incorporated sprint frame. So not only did this influence Adidas's F50 speed line to be as light as possible, it also influenced their entire lineup as a whole to be lighter and lighter to come closer, or at least somewhat close, to the F50 Adi Zero. And this also influenced other brands to kind of raise the bar as far as trying to make their shoes as light as possible. Again, not just in their speed lineup, but also across their entire line or spectrum of soccer shoes. So again, super important model. I really think that it's a shoe that's aged well. It's only four years old now, but I definitely think that it still looks the part and it definitely performs the part as well. If you still have a pair of these, let me know down below in the comments. I'm sure many of you guys do. And let me know if you still wear them from time to time. They may even be your current soccer cleats. And there's no shame in that because this is, like I said, a really, really cool pair of shoes. So let me know down below in the comments what you guys think of the retro review series on my channel. If you want to see some other retro reviews, I'll leave some annotations on screen. This is a series that I personally really enjoy just because it's fun for me at least to kind of look back on some of these older models and reflect how they've impacted the market and really how far shoes have evolved over the last couple of years because it really is a constant and very fast evolution when you look at models from just four years ago to what we have now. Um, so again, leave your feedback down below. Please keep in mind that these retro, retro review videos uh, do cost a little bit of money because I have to find these shoes which are pretty hard to come by and when I do actually come across a pair to feature on the channel, they generally aren't cheap. So if you enjoy the series, want to continue see seeing it on the channel, be sure to support the video with a like. It would be greatly appreciated. If you have any questions or suggestions for other um, older models you'd like to see reviewed or featured on the channel, be sure to leave your suggestions down below in the comment section as well. Um, subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all of my social media information down below in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.